So I'm really bummed out that I couldn't draw on location. On our third day or second full day there, it was super windy and cold. I should have kept the footage on my phone with the tripod being tipped over by the wind, but I just deleted unusable footage immediately. So note to self, keep all footage until after the video is complete, whether it's good or bad. If you've been watching my videos from the start, you know I have a fear of drawing in public, so this would have been the perfect spot for someone like me to draw. No one was on that side of the campground the entire time we were there, so I was really bummed out that the conditions weren't ideal. It would have been such a nice, peaceful day of sketching and painting with no one around. This area has a really cool setup, and at the time of this video, each spot was only five bucks a day to reserve because it's for cyclists or hikers in the area, and if you notice from the video footage I took upon arrival, you can't park there. So if you are adventurous and ever want a bike ride or hike through the Los Padres National Forest and need a spot to tent camp overnight, then Kirk Creek Campground is for you. Okay, so let's move forward and sketch what I intended to sketch, which is this picnic table. I'll leave a link in the description to this reference for you to download if you'd like to give it a shot, or you can draw with me. I took this photo and some footage of this area shortly after we arrived, hence no movement in the trees or plants. So as you notice, I sketched with pencil first, just so I can get my perspective almost correct. Then I'll loose sketch in ink, watercolor, and then most likely finish off with colored pencils. Okay, let's talk about Los Padres National Forest. In 1898, President William McKinley created the Pine Mountain and Zaca Lake Forest Reserve. Later, in 1903, it became the Santa Barbara Forest Reserve. Over time, it merged with the Santa Inez, San Luis, and Monterey Forest Reserves. So, in 1936, President Franklin D. Roosevelt named the renamed the entire area the Los Padres National Forest. This forest covers over 1.7 million acres, equivalent to more than 2,700 square miles. The habitat within the forest varies in elevation, stretching from sea level along the Monterey coast to the highest point at 8,831 feet on Mount Pinos. From the sandy shores to the tall redwood forests, it's got everything. Oceans, trees, plants, grasslands, and so much more. It's home to over 460 different animals and fish, and they're reintroducing rare creatures like the California condors, bald eagles, the elusive peregrine falcons, tool elk, and bighorn sheep. There are also over 30 sensitive plant species, so that being said, don't forget about the poison oak. This is such a beautiful drive up or down the coast with many vista points, campgrounds, and restaurants sprinkled here and there. If you're ever in California, then the Big Sur area is definitely worth the visit. Okay, so now let's get into some interesting folklore of the Santa Lucia Range, which is near the Kirk Creek Campground. I'll leave references in the description for more details about this story, but here's a summarized version of the dark figures of the Santa Lucia Range. Legend has it that in the late afternoon sun, mysterious figures will emerge. Picture a tall dark shape against the sky with arms wide open and the sunlight creating a halo around its head. Some say the figure looks like it's wearing a cloak or cape and wearing a hat. The Chumash Native Americans first spoke of these sightings in stories passed down through generations, and they were even noted in their cave paintings. The Spanish explorers in the 1700s called these mysterious beings Beans. Now excuse my pronunciation, um, but they call them Los Vigilantes Oscuros, or the Dark Watchers. Even John Steinbeck wrote about them in a story called Flight. Now here's the eerie part. Those who've spotted these figures often feel like they're being watched first. Some say it's just shadows playing tricks, creating weird shapes on the mountainsides. But there are people who left gifts for these mysterious watchers, like flowers, trinkets, and fruits, as if trying to make friends or communicate with them. Whether it's a trick of light or something more mysterious, the dark watcher continues to lurk in the shadows, making brief appearances in our world. So next time you're in the Santa Lucia Mountains, keep an eye out for the tall, dark figures against the setting sun. But it's always fun to hear these stories and folklores of the area. And again, I will leave links to references of other folklores and stories. All right, let's finish up this sketch and I'll see you on the other side. Mm -hmm.